Hello, we are here at the 23, uh, 23rd Chaos Communication Congress in Berlin in 2006. My name is Markus Beckedahl and my guest today is Roger Dingeldein from the Tor project. Mm -hmm. Roger, what is Tor? Uh, Tor is an anonymous communication system. The idea is that we let people browse the web or instant message uh, without revealing what sites they're going to. Uh, maybe if their ISP is trying to, to track what they do, or maybe if the website is trying to track who they are and what their interests are. Why do we need that? There are a lot of different reasons for that. And there are a lot of different reasons why uh, a lot of people use Tor. Uh, we have ordinary individuals who don't want to get stuck in large databases of personal information. Uh, a few months ago, AOL published a, a, a big list of all the search queries it saw for a little while, and a lot of people learned that maybe they didn't want to be in these big databases at that point. Um, and then also corporations use Tor because they want to have good security on the internet. They don't want everybody to know exactly what their engineers are searching for and whether they're talking to the patent lawyers today or not. Um, and governments use Tor because they want to have security when they talk to various groups on the internet. Uh, so anonymity is, is something that a lot of different groups need. And that is legal in our days? Yes. Uh, security is still legal. Oh, cool. Yeah. You talked about Tor and China on that congress. Mm -hmm. What was it about? One of the big questions that we have right now, so we, we developed Tor originally with civil liberties in mind. We want to let people in free countries be able to, to communicate and secure their communications so they can keep their freedoms. A lot of people in China are using Tor, and they like the anonymity properties, but the reason they're using it is for reachability. They're using it so they can get to the, to the news sites and the business sites and the web comics that they would like to read. Um, so the big question for that is, uh, we didn't design it with that in mind, and there are some ways that China could block all connections to the Tor network if they wanted to. And they haven't done that yet, and we can certainly uh, talk uh, to the political science people about uh, why that is. But the technical question I'd like to answer is, how do we make it harder for somebody to block connections to the Tor network if they decide to do that? Um, how is the develop, uh, development of Tor running? Is it free software? How many people are involved? It's free software. We started in 2002 or so. And uh, at this point we have two full-time developers and we hired an executive director a little while ago also. So we have just become a, a US nonprofit. Uh, so it's going pretty well. Uh, a lot of the funding that we're uh, uh, that we believe we have for 2007 is to tackle the blocking resistance problem. So I'm hoping to make a lot more progress on that uh, this year. So Tor, the Tor network is a network where everyone can get involved by running own uh, node servers. What, do, uh, what uh, kind of connection do people need? What kind of computers to be part of the... We have volunteers from all over the world. Uh, if you can uh, push maybe 20 kilobytes a second in each direction, then you're a useful Tor server. Uh, we can handle dynamic IP addresses. Uh, we also have a feature called hibernation where people uh, volunteer 500 gigabytes a month and then uh, the Tor process goes to sleep until the next month. So it can use all sorts of things. We've got uh, rate limiting so it's easy to set it up for uh, 100 kilobytes a second or a megabyte a second or whatever you want to do. And uh, we try to make it really convenient because the security from the Tor network comes from the number of servers that we have. It comes from how large the network is and how many different places there are that you can route through. So the, we need a larger network in order to have uh, a better system. In Europe and Germany we are talking or debating about data retention. Mm -hmm. Is that a problem for the Tor network? If somebody could actually build a data retention system that is secure and safe, uh, yes, it would probably be a problem for the Tor network. Uh, so there are two answers for that. Uh, one of them is, uh, how do you actually build a data retention system that does what you actually want? The first question is, who's going to pay to retain the data and where are you going to store it? The next question is, how do you decide who gets to access it? Can I show up and say, I'm a policeman, I need to know what happened yesterday? Who, who chooses that? The third question is, how do you secure the database? We hear from every company in California these days saying, 
oops, we lost 20 million names, addresses, credit card numbers, social security numbers, because we, we put them in a truck and we, we don't know where they went. Uh, corporations aren't any good at keeping track of their data. The US government isn't any good at keeping track of its data. Why do we expect Europe is going to be able to secure a huge database of, of everybody's personal profiles? So if you could build one of those, which you can't, uh, it's an open research question how well we can be secure against uh, an attacker who is logging everything on the internet. Uh, that's not what Tor is designed against right now, and uh, there are people thinking about it, but it's a tough question. Okay, how many nodes are running Tor at the moment? There are something like 800 servers out there. Oh, that's much um, more than one year ago. Much more than one year ago. We are doubling every four to six months at this point. Okay, um, and do you expect 2,000 in next year at the same time? We'll find out. It really depends how much time we have to work on development and documentation uh, and also outreach. Uh, I try to spend a lot of my time uh, explaining to people how Tor works and then they say, oh, that's great, I have to participate. Uh, I'll help out, I'll run a server. But I also want to spend time uh, actually writing more Tor and designing it. So I'm hoping that other people can go talk to people about why they need to help with Tor. And this is a great opportunity here at the Congress because there are many thousands of people who really care. Okay, thank you very much and good luck for the future. Thank you. Bye. Help the Tor project by volunteering on several stuff. We need everything. Uh, we need people to run servers, we need people to help do documentation, we need people to help translate the documents. We have something like 10 languages, but they're never quite up to date. And I don't know what they actually say, because I don't know Chinese and Arabic and Italian and so on. Uh, so there's translation. Um, user interface is a very important part. Uh, we're mostly working on the research question of what should Tor do on the back end so that you're actually secure. And there's a, a whole other question of what should Tor do in front of the user so he knows whether he's getting security, he knows he's using Tor, he knows how Tor works. Uh, how do you present that to the user? So that's another big piece of it. Uh, packaging is another uh, really tough question. Uh, how do you get all the different uh, pieces of Tor easily configured in just a little bundle that you can install? Uh, there's a lot of research that needs to be done. There's a whole community of people who are trying to solve the question of, of what is anonymity really and how do we measure it and, and, and what anonymity does Tor get. Uh, we need more people working on development. There are a lot of things we know we need to build and we don't have enough people around to actually build them. Uh, so pretty much anything you can help with, we need help with. There are two people working full time and uh, a few thousand volunteers. Uh, one of the other things we need is somebody to help coordinate all the volunteers. Uh, if you've ever run an internet project, you may uh, be aware that lots of people show up and they're very excited and you say, here, look at this list of 80 things you could do. And there's something more we need to do besides point them to the list. Mm -hmm. uh, so more help coordinating people would be great too. An activist manager. Yes, yeah. an activist manager. And is uh, Tor running on every device or only on personal computers? There are, uh, Tor is very portable at this point. Um, it, in, it compiles and runs on uh, Windows, OS X, BSD, Linux. There's a fellow running a Tor server on his IRIX64 platform. Um, it's kind of fun to try to keep compiling on that. There's a fellow in Italy who's running a Tor server on his Xbox. I don't think it's up right now, but uh, he was running it before. Uh, ROP made a package for the Linksys WRTG54, so there are people running a, a Tor server on their little wireless thing up in the corner of their house. Um, so it, it runs in a lot of different places at this point, and uh, that's where the usability comes in. We need to make it really usable to have a Tor server, because the larger the network is, the better Tor is. Okay, yeah, thank you again. Okay. <laughs> Goodbye again. Goodbye again. <laughs> yeah, it was.